Dressing for success usually means wearing a suit. It's the uniform that's traditionally defined men's economic roles. And as women have achieved success in the work world, they've done so in their power suits. The basics of the suit have been unaltered for over a century. A jacket and trousers or skirt. It's a look that's never out of style. Every suit has to look good on paper first. So a designer sketches a style. It's a creative process, but also highly technical. He plans the entire outfit right down to the last stitch. No detail is left to chance here. They feed the design data to this computerized cutting machine. The C-blade slices through fabric placed under paper. And because it's computerized, it's very precise, producing pieces that will fit together like a puzzle. This is how they used to cut the fabric, by hand. It was more time-consuming, and the margin for error was much greater. Now it's time for some reinforcement. She places fusing tape made of fabric onto a sleeve piece, and then sends it to a heat chamber with rollers that will bond the tape to the material, giving it strength. Next, it's over to the sewing machine. A worker lines up two sleeve layers, and it's hands-free from here. A rail powered by compressed air descends and guides the fabric under the needle. A computer controls the sewing. This frees up the operator to continuously feed the machine. This is an automatic pocket welt machine. It makes pockets. She places the front of a jacket under a clamp and puts the welt fabric in the clamp and a pocket flap at the side. The clamp automatically slides the fabrics to needles that sew the welt and flap onto the jacket. Then two tiny knives emerge and cut the pocket open. The result? A precisely made pocket, completely by automation. The only human involvement is to feed the machine and then collect the finished product. Now, over at another station, an operator irons fusible tape onto the open seams. This stabilizes them and gives them a crisp finish. A worker places the front of the jacket on a headless mannequin called a buck. A hot metal press moves in, and the pressing reshapes the jacket to the contours of the buck. Now, she puts a sleeveless jacket on another buck and tucks a shoulder pad underneath. She presses a pedal to activate the machine, and the hot press is lower, melting the glue on the shoulder pad, which fuses it to the jacket. Now things are about to get really steamy. Another jacket is on another mannequin, and a worker clamps down the sleeves. A big steam bag made of porous vinyl swings in, wafting steam onto the front of the jacket. At the same time, hoses pipe steam into the porous mannequin cavity, so this jacket gets a steam press from both sides. This machine is a collar master. She folds the collar into the correct position and lowers a big fabric-covered metal press onto the collar to iron down the fold. It's time for the auto jig machine. It's making an extension piece to the second button for a pant waistband. This is the piece that goes over to the second button on the waistband of dress pants. It sews and cuts two layers of fabric that are held in a jig and then feeds the excess fabric to a vacuum tube for disposal. Now it's time to define a crease in a pair of trousers. An operator slides a pair of pants, inside out, onto a double rail. Then, using a device similar to a caulking gun, she pipes a silicone-based liquid along the crease line. The liquid is a permacrease mixture, which will give the crease some staying power. There's also a nib on the end of this gun, which sharpens the crease. All that stitching and steaming seems to have gone without a hitch. But the designer still needs to inspect the work to see if it measures up to his original concept. If adjustments have to be made, he marks the spots. After all, if the suit looks good, he'll look good. And you've got to look good to feel good.